East to week three video session, and I'm so excited about everything that we experienced the past three weeks. As a bonus of having to get this wonderful video on today instead of Thursday, I wanted to add a 10%, extra 10% discount on those who desire to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. So not, it's not now only 40%, but for those who are connected to the Rescued series, it is 50% off of those sessions. So you contact me. My information is in the email that I sent out to you today. And I just want to encourage you to keep moving forward in all aspects of your life and knowing that God desires pure and holiness inside of you, wholeness in every aspect of your life, leaving no part of you untouched by his awesome, amazing hands. I just wanted to just give you a little snapshot that our one-on-one -on -one coaching session is a little bit different um, than the group sessions um, in that it's more individualized, it's personal. Um, I'm not going to be doing like a whole topic session like we do in the group discussion. We will talk about your goals talk about where you want to be and even dive into where, why you feel like you haven't met those goals. And then I will talk about what I feel like you can work on and we can work on together as a team to get you to where you need to be. So it's a different setup. I just wanted to give you that little information about the one-on-one -on -one sessions, that it's a lot different than the group sessions. The group sessions are structured in a way that Many women can be on the call, um, and I'm giving you tools um, that can help you move forward in your life. But when you do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, we can dive in a little bit more deeper and just connect to what you're doing, what's happening in your life personally. And we will um, go before God, and, and we will use those tools that he's given us so that you can be successful because that's what he desires and for you to be happy and feel loved and accepted in all aspects of your life. So ladies, I just want to extend that offer to you 50% off and thank you for your time and your wonderful patience and allowing me to be a part of your life and in your living rooms, in your cars, on your job, wherever we connected at on these past three weeks. Thank you for allowing me to share your life with you. Um, this weekend, amazing. It was an amazing weekend. Um, I had a book signing and event uh, for my children's book, I Believe You Little One. And for those of you who don't know, I am an author. This is my second book. And it, it's all about validating the voice of our children. Um, it's a very diverse book um, where um, different children can see their identity and see themselves in the book. Um, but it's all about encouraging them to find their voice, that we believe in them, God believes in them, that we love them, and that they have a voice and they can use it to speak up and speak loud. So I just want to share with you, if you want to order a copy, maybe for a gift for um, your grandchildren, your children, or your friend's child, your niece, your nephew, um, um, let me know and I will definitely send you out an autographed copy. And the books um, are ten dollars so anyway i just want to share that with you just in case you were wondering about those wonderful teal and gold balloons <laughs> so okay we're going to get started in prayer ladies i sent you out the conference call recording and i know that you haven't looked at it because i get a report every time someone listens or watches the videos i'm telling you i'm going to dive in what we talked about tuesday but I pray that it, you will experience what we experience on the call. Let me just say that. But I encourage you to go listen to the call because God really worked on a lot of the women's hearts and how he feels about them. Because it's so important. We do focus on how other people feel about us and how we're not accepted. But God is wanting you to know that he accepts you. Uh, so we'll dive in. Thank you, ladies. Lord God, we just give you glory down and praise. And I thank you for each and every single one of these women. I thank you, Lord God, that your desire is to see them whole, to see them flourishing, 
to not only be surviving in this world, but to be thriving in this world, God, full of life, Lord God, wholeness in every aspect, Lord God. So I welcome you in this video session. I welcome you into their hearts, into their lives, God, and you know exactly where they are and what they need, God, and we know and trust that you will meet those needs. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So our resounding scripture um, is Romans 8. And if you've been on the calls and been watching the videos, you know that Romans 8 has been resounding like over. God has been repeating this word to us and, and reminded us that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I'm going to read a different part of Romans 8 that also reveals God's heart. And this, why is this important? Uh, when I'm doing group session coaches to bring in God's heart about us because he's the one that desires to do the work inside of you and, and is doing that work inside of you. He's the one that has literally transformed my life and I cannot speak outside of outside of acknowledging him and acknowledging the words and the wisdom that he gives me not only throughout my life but in his word so yes throughout my coaching sessions you will hear this is what god is saying and this is what i see god's um a vision or what he wants to do in your life because he is my source and i cannot speak outside of him i cannot give myself any glory because where I am and the woman that I've become has to do with him. So God's intention, ladies, for this um, week three topic, which I will call unashamed. I love that word, unashamed, because I know many aspects, many experiences of our lives, we have felt ashamed. We and it, it may not even be something we've done. It may be of things people have done to us that have made us walk with our heads down, not in confidence, and I'm feeling the worth and the value that we are. So this this session is called unashamed. And I believe God's intention for this session is for each of us to gain an understanding of what he has done for us, understanding how his work has manifested in our life. Where does it leave us? Where does it leave us as we walk through this life? Where does that leave us when, you know, um, if once we understand what God has done, where does that bring us and what is our understanding? The foundation of truths we should always understand in every single season of our lives. So we're going to be discussing things that you need to grab a hold of because this is something that I stand on and I understand and and it has propelled me and allowed me to accomplish things that I never thought I I could do um and I'm my family dynamics the way I grew up just doesn't give me that sense of confidence and stability and ability to see myself as the way God sees me it is God who gave me that so um our scripture I'm going to read is Romans 8 starting at verse 31 and I wanted to just in, in, introduce how judgment, that word judgment, you know, immediately I know we think about someone um, pointing out something that we're, we've done wrong, pointing out that we need to work on some aspect of our lives, pointing out that uh, we are not where we need to be, right? You know, when I hear the word judge or someone saying, don't judge me, it is usually because they're getting defensive about what's being stated by the person that's making a statement, right? But God is wanting to um, just expand our understanding of the word judgment and of his position as judge in our lives and what that looks like. So Romans 8, 31 is going to give us this glimpse of God's loving character of judge and that he is a righteous judge. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with also freely give all things? So God, it's, saying, it's saying in verse 32, if he didn't spare his son, but delivered his son for us all, for our freedom, for our salvation, for our deliverance, our healing, won't he give us, freely give us all things? All things. Verse 33 so who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It's saying who is he, lowercase he, meaning who is a person who condemns us, who condemns you? It is God who, who it is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of the Father of God who also makes intercession for us. 
And that's when it goes into verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So in verses 31 to 35, it is resounding about God's character of being righteous judge. That his judgment on on earth, on, on about human life and his creation was that of love, that of mercy, that of grace, that of freedom, that of liberty. And I want to give you an example of this. If if you were in court, and some of us have been in court for whatever different reasons, or have not, or, or know the process that you know you have a judge presiding over a case, and then you have um, your lawyer that is that is um, defending that person or defending you, and you have a lawyer that is defending the other side of it, right? So here is God. If we can vision this a little bit, you are that person that the other people or judge or the experiences in our lives maybe are saying she is guilty. She is guilty. She's guilty of this. She's guilty of that. She's guilty of that. But what we're seeing in the scriptures that God is presiding over all cases in our lives. He is the righteous judge. And his judgment and his decision concerning our lives and whatever things, mistakes we've made and things we've done, he has decided to love us. And how did he decide that? He decided to give up his son, Jesus Christ, for our freedom, for our liberty, to reconcile, to bring us back into a relationship with him. So that is God's judgment on your life. That is one of grace. That is one of love. That is one of freedom, liberty, and mercy. So you know that in a, um, a natural case that you are out of proven innocent or guilty, and then there is a verdict on what those, um, what is the consequences or what is the benefits of that verdict, right? So God, even though, yes, we have done wrong, he has decided to forgive us. And to cleanse us, to um, there's a scripture or a song that I remember where it talks about that, our you know his he has made us white as snow, right? And the 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 meaning of white, uh, the color white has to do with innocence in this verse. It has to do with purity. That it's because of His blood that we are whiter than snow. So God is being a righteous judge over your life, and he has decided. His decision was made years and years ago, and he decided to send his son to give us life, to give us love, to be in relationship with us, to um, cause us to walk before him holy and without blame, before him in love. Ephesians talks about that, that I stand before you in love, in love. So that's a new way to think about God as the righteous judge and that being God in his righteousness, he had to make a judgment. But his decision, his decision is that of righteousness, that of love and mercy and grace, deliverance, healing, all that you need. Ladies, you're accepted. Acceptance was one of his judgments and the benefits, right? So let's read Psalms 103 because it talks about the, the benefits of this judgment. It talks about the benefits of the position that our righteous judge, Jesus Christ, I mean, our Father, our God, took and and what, and what how that benefits us, right? 103, Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life for destruction, who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord es executes, executes righteousness and justice for all who is oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children, of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow the anger, abounding in mercy. Oh, I love verse 11, right? We're going to go ahead and skip to verse 11. Oh, verse 10. 
He will not, verse 9, sorry, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions, from us ladies so this is the benefits of him being righteous judge over our lives and i love there's a part of the bible with david i think it was after he sinned and his sin found him out and he and he is given a, a decision or ultimatum you out of you want god to to decide what your consequences are or you will be delivered to the hands of the people and david so wisely said lord I would rather, I would rather you be presiding over this case in my life because I know that your hands are merciful, right? But if I, if you, if I'm put into the hands of men, they're, they're not, it's like, there's no grace there. But in God, when we're in his hands, there's love, there's grace, there's acceptance because it all will work out for our good, right? Everything that he is a part of will work out for our good, ladies. So I just wanted to encourage you to give you a new mindset about this character of judge of God and that we can walk before him unashamed, 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 unashamed. I'm so excited. Um, so we can focus on the loving and accepting character of God. It is not easy to grab a hold of the idea if a human person cannot accept us, how can God accept us? You know, it's not easy to be able to think, well, if I am not accepted in this world, how can a, a God that I do not see accept me? But this is what our experiences dictate to us. It, it's It's like... Our, and I talked about this in our renewed session. Our, our experiences teach us how to interact with God. And so we don't approach God. We don't feel like we can touch him and we can talk to him and, and commune with him because of the things we experience in this life. But ladies, God has opened up his arms to you and Christ has given us access to the Father. He has built that bridge that you can walk across and run to his arms. That's what I envision myself. When I envision love with 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 the Father, I envision open arms. I can just run to him and find safety in him. And you can also. So sometimes that hesitation, uh, we are hesitant to connect with God because of our experiences, because there is a hidden contention within us that tells us we can't approach God from a relationship point standpoint. Shame will hinder us from connecting with God. Shame will hinder us from connecting with God. And Jesus allowed us to have access to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way that we approach God. He is the way that we know that we're accepted by God because he gave his life, which was to give us life. Amen. Like to give us life. And it's so amazing. So amazing. So I wanted to lift up some questions to you um, to think about my questions to ponder. When you examine your heart, mind, and spirit, do you see any areas you feel ashamed? Are there any areas you feel like you let God down? Sometimes we can hide behind the things we do, we are doing right, never acknowledging the vulnerable areas of our lives, never bringing it before God so that we can be renewed, restored, and revived. Most importantly, we are assured of his acceptance for us of us. And the example that comes to mind is Edom, Adam and Eve, how immediately after their sin, they begin to hide from God. And I just thought about, Lord, what if their approach towards you would have been so different that they would have just ran to you asking for forgiveness? And, and you know, how would that would have been if they would have just said, you know, I own what I've done, God, and forgive me versus hiding and blaming each other for the things that they've done. Number four, don't allow this to be one of those moments when you put up a wall 
I'm encouraging you and I'm with you. So let's go before God in prayer together. So ladies, what we did on the call, and that's why I recommended that you listen to the call, the whole call, is that we went to a quiet place. I asked all of the ladies on the call to go to a quiet place, and you can do that even now, to bring all of the hidden areas of shame in your, in your heart, all of those things that you can kind of cover up because you're doing so many things good, and I, and I applaud you on that, but a part of moving forward and continuing to grow and thrive and become whole is to allow God in those areas that may make us feel like we're disconnected. Are we unable to dis are unable to connect with God? And I, I encourage you to begin to renounce the areas of shame. And when I say that, I mean, say it out loud. Hear yourself say that this area will no longer hold me captive in shame. Name it. This area, this area of fear will no longer hold me captive to shame. This area of rejection. You know, for me, being not mothered appropriately, I felt rejected and put aside, not important enough to be cared for. And I remember you know, thinking that I, and I had healed from a lot, but being in a place of worship and it being revealed that I still had that sense of rejection on me, in my heart. And it affected the way I connected to God. It affected that next place I needed to go with him to be in more relationship with him. And I just, I'm so thankful that um, God is so faithful to bring those areas to us, to show us where we're still hurting and we haven't healed, to show us where we need to be whole. And ladies, it's, I know a lot of times we don't want to go to these places, but this is how you obtain wholeness, God. Ladies, this is how you walk beyond those barriers within yourself, within your mind, where you, the self-talk, it's those areas are the things that are causing you to not go there. Um, so I just want to reflect on that for me, just to give you time to think about it. You know, I know that my grandmother loved me and my grandfather loved me in their own way. But it's nothing like being loved by your mom. And um, I have yet to experience that. But... I forgave her, and when God brought it up to me, it just, it's a revealing. It's like the questions to ponder. It causes a, you to reveal, those things to be revealed. And when they're being revealed, know that God is taking care of them. Just go with them, with God, into those places of your heart. And I'm so grateful that um, he just... He's led me so gracefully to those difficult places. And I'm just encouraging you to take time today as you listen to this video to go there and allow God to heal, forgive, love, and accept you and embrace you. And I just want to thank God for just Helping me walk through that. You know, my prayer for my mom now is just, I want her to experience wholeness. That's what I want for her. I don't want her to be mom. I mean, I'm grown at this point. So it's like, I just pray for her to be healed. To experience God like I have. To be able to experience freedom because all I've known of her about her, even in her youth, was that of abuse, that she was uh, hurt. And I know that probably her lifestyle choices, drugs put her in worse places and made her vulnerable to even more trauma. Um, so I just pray that she receive wholeness and experience Christ like I have and, and be set free. 
So I used to be ashamed of that. I used to be ashamed that I didn't have a mom, that everybody in my neighborhood knew my mom and they didn't know her in her best light. You know, she was a known drug addict and, um, just blessed by God because he's brought me in such a long way. Ladies, he has, I mean, if you know my story, you're getting to know a part of it that you probably haven't heard. And I'm grateful for God to just even bring it up now that it's for someone that God will gently carry you through these things. And I'm so grateful for him and to him because he's brought me from a very long way. And these things that I share with you on the call, ladies, the things that I will share with you on a one-on-one session, they're from my heart. You're talking to a woman that has been through some things and God has gracefully and so patiently um, brought her through. And I'm just excited to walk on this journey with you. So I will end there, ladies, and I just want to encourage you to reach out to me. Um, Have a good Thanksgiving. Um, Take advantage of the percentage off, you know, and just jump into this coaching. And let's do this together. Let's see you do you, right? I mean, there's so much inside of you, ladies, and I know it is. I know it. I hear it when I talk to you on the phone. I I know it when I've met some of you that you have so many things that you want to do. So let's do it together. Let me partner with you. Partner with me. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for being patient um, on this video coming to you. I'm, I'm glad. I'm actually glad it came when it did because I think if I would have did it Friday after doing the different things I did, um, with the youth and the young adults, encouraging them, I probably wouldn't have had the time that I needed to go into that place of talking about my mom and the shame that I experienced with that and how God released that from me, the rejection. And so uh, be blessed on this wonderful Sunday. Um, Love on family. I encourage you, ladies. Also, um, I wanted to let you know I'm per... My consulting company um, has created a hope box and you'll be seeing some advertisement about that soon. And in that hope box, you will have a journal, you will have a book. Um, I will give three options of a book that you would like to use or read in the next year. Um, Also, you will get um, a, a free session with me. Um, and there's other things. Um, I wanted to create a box that gives back. So one of the gifts that's in the box is going to be from women who were homeless and they're learning how to make things um, to build income for themselves. So one of those special gifts that you are actually purchasing by purchasing the whole box will be empowering and giving another woman hope. I, I'm, I'm excited about that because I'm a give back person. Like I love p- play, paying it forward and, and encouraging other women. So not only when, when you purchase that whole box for a gift for your friend, your mom, your sister, um, you are actually pouring into another woman too. You're not only pouring into you or that person that you bought a hope gift, hope box for, but you are actually impacting another woman's life. And I think that's cool. Um, so look out for that advertisement. You can order it. And um, I'm just so blessed to have in and have to had to connect with you to be able to connect with you. Sorry, um, ladies. So I encourage you to be encouraged. We'll pray. And I just pray that you take the time. Listen to the session again. And again, it's your session. It's in your email. Um all of the sessions are yours to look at. You have access to it from here on, you know, and also those recordings are available to you. So I go over the, the, um, the um, sorry, the sessions. I'm at a loss of words because I'm just so mixed by God, but, um, and reach out to me. Um, 
Let's do this. Ladies, let's do this. So, Lord God, I just give you glory and honor, and I thank you. I thank you for where you brought me from, and I thank you where you bring each of these ladies from in their own journeys. And I glorify you. I thank you. Welcome. Ladies, be, be encouraged, be renewed, be restored, be brave. I love you. Bye-bye.